Thanks for staying with us. Now, days after the Mumbai police arrested a man with 80,000 SIM cards, the police in Chennai have also turned the heat on retailers selling SIM cards without due background checks. Police say criminal action is being initiated against such retailers selling SIM cards, obtaining fake ID proof. This after it became evident that almost all the cases of death threats to VVIPs in the city were done using SIM cards after submitting fabricated documents. Our crime correspondent Salim has more. A fortnight ago, the police control room in Egmo received a threatening call where the caller said bombs were planted in the secretariat, specifically targeting the chief minister. After screening the secretariat for explosives, police launched a hunt for the caller. Investigations revealed that the caller, 36-year-old Yogeshwaran, a dismissed lecturer from a private college in Madurantagam, had misused the photo identity of his colleague to purchase the SIM card. Both he and the retailer who sold the SIM have been arrested. We, are, we can definitely uh, prosecute the uh, retailers. It's happened in uh, some cases. In fact, if you're aware, some time back the uh, wholesalers went on strike against the company saying that uh, you are forcing us to sell uh, cards. We are doing, they are doing uh, pre-activated cards are being sold. Police say criminal action is being taken against those who sell these cards without proper verification. After it emerged that over 30% of the accused use SIM cards bought with bogus ID and photographs. SIM card wanga varanga abdina voter ID, avudiye photo. Abdi illa abdina ration card jarax and the photo. Ration card le yaru de jarax irko avanga photo do kudukunu. Adhe rendu ID furu birunda do correcta irunda do jarax avangle ke naanga SIM card ubai porto. Cyber cops say retailers are being prosecuted on charges of abetting the crime. The Chennai police have so far chaired eight meetings with service providers, urging them to be more proactive. Guidelines and circulars were issued to regulate bulk SMSs, but police say service providers are not very proactive either. When contacted, the service providers point a finger at the retailers shrugging off any responsibility. The police say SIM cards are not products to be sold in petty shops and that it's high time the telecom regulatory authorities step in. In Chennai, Salim for NDTV Hindu. It's over to the national news now. 24 hours after he was indicted for accepting kickbacks from a mining company, B.S. Yadurapa has agreed to resign as Chief Minister of Karnataka. His party, the BJP, said that it made a unanimous, unanimous decision this morning that he has to make way for a new leader. The BJP said it expected Mr. Yadurapa to abide by its decision and he did. At 68 years old, Bukhanakere Siddhalingappa Yediyurappa has been the face of the BJP in Karnataka. Starting out with the RSS in his youth, he joined the Jansang and then the BJP. Although he was born in Mandya district, he lived in contested elections from Shimoga district, from where he entered the assembly. As a Lingayat leader, he helped bring a significant vote bank to the Saffron party, something that helped to guarantee his survival in the seat of power for so long. But it is not just his caste. Yediyurappa has long been a BJP loyalist. He was a fiery leader of the opposition in Karnataka before coming to national prominence when he shared power with the Janata Dal secular in an ill-fated coalition. When Kumaraswamy, who was the first chief minister of that coalition, refused to step down for Yediyurappa and withdrew support, Yediyurappa lasted as chief minister for all of one week. But he came back strongly in the elections that followed that disastrous tie-up. Like many Indian politicians, he is a real family man. And allegations of nepotism, land deals that favoured his children, came to haunt him. Allotment of prime BDA sites to his family members. Denotified land sold to them at below market rate that was later sold for a huge profit. These charges were used by his political detractors, both in and out of the party, to attack him repeatedly. There have been several rebellions within his party against him. The Reddies, who helped him to come to power after elections by wooing over independence, later turned rebels and threatened his position. They seem to be on the same side now. But there have been other rebellions within the state BJP ranks. Yediyurappa's autocratic personality has not endeared him to all, and several complaints were carried to the party high command. B.S. Yediyurappa will go down in India's political history as the BJP's first chief minister in South India. It may not have been a comfortable seat, 
and his detractors will say that he tarnished the image of his party with all those allegations of corruption against him. But he did lead the BJP to successive election victories in the state and his party will know that he is a force to be reckoned with. Maya Sharma in Bangalore for NDTV. Here's a look at some top ministers who could perhaps succeed Chief Minister Yadurappa. Jagdish Shatar, the current Rural Development Minister, not a nationally known figure, but a Lingayat like the current Chief Minister Yadurappa. Something that can work in his favour, or it can work against him if Yadurappa wants to stay the dominant Lingayat leader. Ishwarappa, again not a nationally known figure, but being backward caste and state party president might work for him. Sadananda Gowda, former BJP state president and known to be non-controversial. Anant Kumar, long considered a Yadurappa rival, believed to be working against him behind his back. Publicly, he and Yadurappa put on a united front. Suresh Kumar, law minister, someone who enjoys a very clean image, but as a Brahmin, he may not have a large vote bank to count on. Shobha Karan Lajay, this one could be a real long shot and unlikely to be acceptable. She is close to Yadurappa and that closeness could work against her. Or V.S. Acharya, former Home Minister and a Yadurappa loyalist. A Brahmin, which again may work against him. Well, it is World Hepatitis Day and the mantra this year. This is hepatitis, know it and confront it. And with 13.5 million people infected with the virus in Asia, awareness has become the main focus. Dipti Kumar brings you more. WHO says one in every 12 people knowingly or unknowingly is infected with hepatitis. Maybe that's why the awareness mantra this year says, this is hepatitis, know it, confront it. And today, target groups are doing just that. We have taken it as a, you know, as a, as a prime call this year to try and promote the activities of the World Hepatitis Alliance. And one of the mainstays this time is that we would like to create an awareness about this disease and hopefully influence policy makers to understand that they would need to devote more time, more money, more effort in the evaluation and management of this disease. While private groups target policy makers, government organizations are reaching out to middle and lower middle income groups. Roughly, we have screened roughly 1,300 people we have screened so far. And uh, to our shocking surprise, about 44 persons were positive for hepatitis B and uh, 17 people which turned positive for hepatitis C. Totally 61 persons we have picked out. So in the seven days program, actually 61 people have been picked out. Those who didn't have any symptoms and signs of disease. Although Tamil Nadu is lower down the order in WHO ranking, experts say early detection and an active immunization drive could push the state further down the prevalence order. Uh, India has is an intermediate zone, that is a 2 to 8 percent. Uh, we are reaching the 5 percent of positivity. By detecting this uh, uh, antenatal screening of the HBCC in a uh, pregnant mother, so if you are detected earlier, so that you can uh, vaccinate the baby with the active and passive immunizations, so that the baby can be protected. Among the one of the mode of uh, transmission of HBV infection is a mother to child transmission. It is the commonest mode of transmission in our country as well as in our state. The biggest challenge ahead, the doctors say the key to dealing with hepatitis is acceptance, especially from those who are not infected. With camera person Lucas, this is Dipti Kumar for NDTV Hindu. Well, the special writings on the wall on Hepatitis Day, social networks certainly give way for special messages. A post on Facebook that sums it up, a pair of wings on the back, a butterfly on the ankle or simply a pair of initials on the hand. Beautifully designed tattoos are a craze these days, but getting yourself inked can expose you to dangerous hepatitis B or C virus and even HIV. Well, time to slip into a short break. The world stops to think, will India be rather handicapped at their lucky venue, Trent Bridge, without the likes of Zach? 